Hi, Dr. Gosh is here, botguru.net, and I wanted to show you a little bit of what you can do in my experiences with Ubot Studio. You might know me from the website botguru.net. This is a website that I personally own myself. I do have some public bots that I sell on here, uh, and new ones being added all the time. I've created both code for UBOT for other UBOT Studio users. I've created bots themselves by those posting on the request section for bots to be created on UBOT Studio forums. And I've also created some different bots that are being used in current WSOs on the Warrior Forum for the Warrior members and for the Black Hat uh, World members as well. Um, I, I pretty much run under the name Lowrider TJ on most forums across the internet. Uh, some people might know me as Theodore Gashas or Bot Guru. Uh, some things that I wanted to kind of point out is the amount of money that you could really make from generating bots for other people. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just jump into some transaction reports on Odesk. Now it shows here on my website I've got 12 contracts completed. My average hourly pay is $16.67. That doesn't sound like much, but that's just my hourly work. Uh, when we go into my actual transactions here, you'll see that uh, I've had quite a few tr transactions and just since November 1st until now, so that's uh, two, that's about seven months time, uh, just on Odesk, which I really don't push too much, I've had almost $4,000 worth of projects uh, that I've taken on. Now, over that time, I've only had but maybe 12 projects that I've actually done inside of Odesk. So when you take $4,000 and divide that by 12 projects, that means I'm averaging about $333 a project. Some projects are more, some are less. I've actually got one project open right now that's another $1,800 on top of this. And that's just a classified poster uh, for, I believe, 10 different classified websites. So as you can see here, if we take that 4000 it becomes $5,800. 5800 divided by the, say, 12 months, or I'm sorry, 7 months. That means I average about $828 a month, just off Odesk in my spare time, uh, besides anything else I've done. So that alone in itself more than pays for UBOT Studio. Now, the other thing that I want to bring up is the UBOT Studio forums. Now, inside this forum, you can ask questions, ask for support, report bugs, request enhancements, uh, get tips and tricks, see code from other users that has been posted. Uh, so you can really do quite a few different things here. Instead of always submitting a ticket uh, for support to the UBOT Studio support staff, you could come here, post in the UBOT support forum, and not only will a UBOT staff member reply to you, but the UBOT community stands behind its fellow members. Uh, I myself respond to quite a few different threads here in the UBOT Studio forum. As you see, there's over 15,000 replies uh, to people inside the support area. Now, this could be one person has one way to get something done and three people have three different ways to get something done all helping the same person accomplish the same task so these are different things that you will be privileged to uh, within the UBOT Studio forum some other things to notate is UBOT Studio itself now I've opened this up and uh, you can pretty much see the bot bank, the toolbox, inside the bot bank, and let me just minimize these here. You have a private bot bank that you could store your own bots to and code to so that you can go ahead and recall it as needed. Uh, email providers and different tasks that you would do inside those email providers. So these are, these are all pre-formatted code that you could use in your bots. The ones marked with Pro require the uh, UBOT Studio Pro version. But most of these can be all used in the standard version of UBOT, as you see here. So, 
going through these there's literally hundreds so there's some there utilities and these ones here are all uncategorized but is in the process of being categorized but as you see there's literally tens of hundreds of sites pre-coded uh, with different options for each one of them that's available inside the bot bank now besides the bot bank you have your regular toolbox and no better than to just show you what this is capable of doing just by using it so if we were to go to I don't know, any website let's just go to uh, let's go to um, Yahoo Better yet, let's go to Hotmail. And we see here's a login page and so forth for Hotmail. Now, say we had a bot that had to just log into Hotmail for whatever reason, and we've got multiple accounts and we want to log into each one of them. The way we would do this is simply by entering a UI element, UI open file, we'll just call it accounts file. and that file would then get created into a table so create table from file and we're going to use that accounts file name and we'll just call this accounts making sure that we clear the table before we generate it just in case it has anything left over in the bot or you run it more than once we're gonna set a variable and we'll just call this row and I'll set that to zero then we're going to loop through the number of lines that we have in our accounts data file. So we go here underneath variable, table total rows. So now it's going to loop however many rows of data we have in that file. So what we want to do is navigate first to Hotmail. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let me remove that out of there. Click OK. Next, once we're here, we're going to want to fill in our login details. So I'll just drag that over. That pulls in the login. That pulls in the password. And I'll fill that with a table cell. We're going to use our row variable. And we'll just say it's from column 0, which is the first column. Next we have our password, same thing, just pull this over, our row data, and that will be from column 1, which is the second table in the list of data. Then we're going to log in, make sure it's at the right spot here, wait for the page to load, and then we can just add a comment, whatever we're doing next whatever you want to do next. Now once that's done we're going to want to increase our row data so it'll go on to the next one and that's it. So now we've got a bot that will log into multiple accounts on Hotmail but say you want to clear cookies. Clear cookies before each time it navigates so that it clears all the data from the previous one that might be caught in the browser. So you want to change proxies. Well let's go ahead and add a open file and we'll say proxy list add list to list we'll just call it proxies we're going to go with list from file And that's going to be our proxy file. Clear that list beforehand. And now you can do this one of two different ways. You can change proxy and you could use a random list item. Or you can loop through them uh, one by one starting at the top. Now the way I would do that would be a little bit more more intensive code. Uh, it just takes a couple more seconds. But we'll go ahead and add it in here anyways. So let's just define this. 
and what we're doing is defining a command that we could then use later on in the bot anytime just by calling this command. So we'll call this one proxy change. And what we're going to do is go with change proxy. We'll go with next list item. Now, with doing so, what we're also going to want to do is add a if statement. So if comparison, and we're going to want to get the current list position, if list position equals and again, this is underneath variable uh, functions. List total. And we're going to set the list position to zero. Now, the reason being is because if we've got 500 accounts we're wanting to log into but only have 10 proxies, this will allow us to keep cycling through that list of proxies that we have. It'll use all 10 and start back at the beginning. So now, up here, let's just set our list position to start with. Open up our custom commands over here that we just created this proxy change and drop it right there. Now it will loop through your account CSV file, clear your cookies before each login, change your proxy based on your proxy list, and I did all this in just a few minutes. So as you see, this is a very powerful software. And this took me just mere minutes to do. I can now compile this and use it later in a EXE format. I can open it up here and use it inside UBOT Studio. If I wanted to, I could add this to my private bot bank, which let me just open that up here for you. If I go over here to my private bot bank and say I wanted to add a website and I'll just call it hotmail.com and there's nothing really to organize that as so I'll just add it that way. Oh, wrong way. If I just right click on this and add category Go with Hotmail, open this back up, right click on Hotmail, add website, so now I've got the website there. Now I want to add a command and I'm going to call this multi account login from CSV and proxies. Since we've got two variables up top, we're going to call the first one accounts file. And that's a file field. Next one is proxy file. And that's a file field. Click OK. Now we see it opens this up in another one. Now if you've got code view, you can just go in, copy all the code, Come over here, paste it, and then sync it. Now by syncing it, it takes just a second here, and as you see here it is. So if we were to close these out, and I don't want to save that, let's open up a new one there. Make sure you want to delete it, delete it. So we've got this fresh area that we can use code. If I wanted to take this command and just drop it in here. We see it's just asking for these two inputs. So literally all you would have to do now is just add those two UI elements which is open file we're going to call it accounts CSV accounts file and the other one being another open file this is proxy file proxy file. 
So now literally all we have to do is just drag in our accounts file, our proxy file, click OK and done. It will literally go through and do everything that we just created in that other tab with just these nodes right here. That's all you got to do. It'll even compile and pull in the code for you so it saves you a ton of time. Say, for instance, we wanted to modify this code. Well, all we do is we just we open up a clean tab here. Right click on it and say add command. That's how you add the actual command. If we needed to edit it, just click on edit script. We see it opens it all up, the exact code. So you could then modify this and sync it back to your private bot bank or to the public bot bank, whichever you're using. And that's exactly how it's used for the bot bank. So as you see, it's a very powerful tool uh, and able to allow you to save your code inside the bot to be able to reuse it, recycle it on other projects, and really help to condense and compile everything together. So I hope you've liked this review uh, as far as how to use UBot, what UBot has to offer, what it can do, uh, and different things like that. Some of the things I didn't really get to touch base on is uh, multiple threads, uh, which allows you to run multiple instances, multiple windows. You can hide them with UI settings over here. You can set the user agent uh, and randomize that uh, for different ra uh, user agents you want to use. Turn images on or off, CSS on or off, allow pop-ups or not, disable JavaScript or not whether you want to allow flash on a web page say you're scraping YouTube well you don't really need the flash to show up you're just grabbing the URLs remove all that junk pages will load ten times faster for you website credentials if you need to set those proxy credentials use name and password normally for private proxies you can go ahead and set those inside that proxy command that we built um, changing your proxies clearing uh, whether or not you want to hide the actual browser, you can do so. Set your splash page, remove the branding, foreground, background color, tab color. So these are all different things that you could do in here uh, that are readily available. Email commands. Send an email, connect to a mail server, verify emails, create a table that you could then work from for the emails, delete emails on or underneath an email account. So these are all things available inside of UBot that... Uh, you know, really make it pretty extensive as to what you can do. Uh, visually being able to do things. Say I wanted to type text. And I can't necessarily select this area right here that I'm wanting to type into. Well, let's go ahead and just use our image selector here. And that tells it I want that. It will go with the absolute most middlest part of that image that it starts to type. I'll just type hello. As you see there, it looks for the image, click run, check that out. Went ahead and typed it with image recognition, not a problem. It'll do the same thing with the click uh, button attribute. Um, it'll really change how you think about creating bots and what's actually physically possible with UBot and your creative mind. Always think outside the box. It's not just something that somebody's already done already. It might be something brand new that only you've created. Uh, that will really kind of take over and market itself for you. So hopefully you've liked this review. It's kind of ran a little bit long. Sorry for that. Uh, but I really suggest UBOT Studio in my personal opinion. It's done great for me. It's done great for my clients. Uh, and it's definitely picked up where my previous business of 12 years dropped off. Uh, this is now my one of my most prominent businesses and ventures is using UBOT and creating code and bot for other people. So I hope it all works out for you, and thank you very much.